the U.S. backed opposition here in Thailand has shifted their focus once again. There's only a handful of things that they're really focused on anyway. And so they're back to complaining about Article 112. What is Article 112? It is Thailand's uh, criminal defamation law protecting the Thai head of state from defamation. The Thai head of state is the king of Thailand. The king of Thailand and his family are protected under these laws. Uh, but by the way, Thailand has criminal defamation laws protecting everyone in the country, and they're, and they're quite severe. They're, they're very strict, and you have to really be careful what you say about other people here in Thailand, no matter who they are. But regarding the head of state, the penalties are more severe. And this is no different than any other country in the world. They have laws protecting everyone. But if you attack or threaten or defame the, the head of state or of state officials, the penalties are oftentimes more severe. It's, there's nothing out of the ordinary about this. But let's watch Associated Press here make it as if there's something out of the ordinary here. So they're calling, they're calling this mob pro-democracy activists. Now, they're not pro-democracy activists. There were elections in Thailand in 2019. The political parties behind these protests, they lost. They lost, and ever since they lost, they've been trying to o overturn the election results. So that's not pro-democracy, that's anti-democracy. They didn't like the outcome of the election, and they're trying to extra-legally overturn it. So how is that pro-democracy? But this is, this is what the Western media does when it's a Western-backed opposition that they are supporting and trying to get back into power. So pro-democracy activists in Thailand on Sunday announced a campaign to gather one million signatures to support the abolition of the law that makes defaming the monarchy a crime. 3,000 people turned out. I didn't see 3,000. I saw 1,000 people there. Uh, and they're saying uh, this Article 112, which they're calling Lay's Majesty, and it's not. It's not Lay's Majesty. That is an archaic law that was abolished a long time ago in Thailand. Article 112 is a criminal defamation law, and that's it. And so they, they conflate this because this is the language of the opposition, and AP is repeating it. So there's no objectivity at all here in this AP article. And they're saying it makes even constructive criticism of the royal institution risky. They also called for dropping charges and releasing those arrested under the law. Now, let me tell you something. If you've been following the opposition here in Thailand, there has been nothing constructive at all about their criticism of the monarchy. They have been threatening the monarchy. They have been accusing the monarchy of crimes ranging from theft to murder to torture with zero evidence zero evidence at all. It is just blatant defamation. It would not be tolerated anywhere in the world, and it's not tolerated here in Thailand. So they're in jail. That's that's where you go when you, you can't behave yourself. They're saying uh, rally organizers last year began holding street demonstrations with three core demands. The resignation of Prime Minister Prayut Chan O Cha, uh, who, who won the election. His party won the election. Tanatan Juang Rung Ruangkit, uh, who is the U.S.-backed billionaire opposition leader, his party, Future Forward, lost by over 2 million votes. They lost to Palang Pachalat. So, uh, again, a pro-democracy movement that refuses to recognize the results of a, an election. So they're saying he initially came to power as army commander by staging a coup in 2014. They're not going to mention the 2019 general election, and they're not going to mention that the 2014 coup was to remove Prime Minister Yingluck Chinawat, who was just holding her brother's place, her brother being Taksin Chinawat, a convicted criminal, a fugitive living abroad, still trying to run the country as a fugitive living abroad through his sister. What country in the world would tolerate that? No country in the world would tolerate that. Uh, neither did Thailand. So that's why there was a coup. They never, they never mentioned that part. They also say amendment of the constitution, and they're not going to give you any details about that, but I will. Uh, that was in August 2020. ILaw launches petition for charter rewrite. The Internet Law Reform Dialogue, ILaw, a human rights NGO, has launched a campaign seeking signatures from 50,000 voters to sponsor a motion for a constitution rewrite. ILaw wanted to rewrite Thailand's entire constitution. Now, you, this is a very sensitive issue, so you would you'd probably guess that ILaw is a, a organization run 
by Thai people, for Thai people, and is most certainly independent. Uh, but of course it is not. It is funded by the US government through the National Endowment for Democracy. Uh, if you go to their 2020, their most recent listing for their programs in Thailand, their political interference here in Thailand, and you scroll down, you're going to see internet law reform dialogue listed here. And if you actually go to their website, this is ILAW's official website, they're, they're backed by many Western foundations and, and government funding arms. Uh, including Open Society and Henrik Boll, which is like the German version of the NED. So you have, f you have a foreign-funded front trying to rewrite Thailand's entire constitution. What other country in the world would, would tolerate that and, and allow an opposition made up of these sort of people to make any progress with their demands? And uh, the last... The last demand is reform of the monarchy, reform of the monarchy. But if you listen to these protesters, it's very clear they want to abolish the monarchy. They just say reform because they understand how unpopular their entire agenda is and they don't want to push it and they don't want to look like extremists. But that is actually their goal. And they have actually slipped up and said it on stage on multiple occasions. Now they talk about Samyong. One of the protest leaders, but again, they're leaving out crucial context here. Somyo worked for Taksin Chinawat. He published his Voice of Taksin magazine. If you look at some of the covers here, you're, you're going to see they're quite nasty and violent. Uh, he advocated violence. He called for armed insurrection. He depicted Taksin Chinawat's political enemies uh, in nooses here. And uh, down here is an example. These are judges who ruled against Taksin Chinawat and seized his assets. So. Uh, some Yelts voice attacks in magazine posted pictures of them all of their personal details including their addresses and phone numbers and uh, they posted all of this next to articles about judges in history who made the wrong decision and ended up dead uh, so it was a it was a threat. They were threatening these judges who ruled against tax and channel. That's who Somyo is, and uh, AP doesn't tell you any of that. He they just say he's one of the protest leaders. He read a letter to the crowd from one of his imprisoned colleagues, calling for gathering one million signatures to present to Parliament in support of repealing Article One One Two. They're saying the imprisoned activist Penguin has been charged in twenty one cases. Said the group the protest group and penguin is this guy and i've showed this many times before who was uh at the u.s embassy multiple times he flew to hong kong to meet with the the u.s backed agitators there nathan law joshua wong so this is a this is a region-wide u.s state department project to interfere in all of these countries and regions and uh, that's what's going on here in Thailand. It's this foreign interference that has nothing to do with democracy. And uh, AP doesn't give you any of this background at all. Now, some people will say, uh, Brian, you know, 112, criminal defamation, this kind of sounds like a, a free speech issue. As a matter of fact, uh, people trying to defend the opposition will say that this is about free speech. And I answer that by pointing out that every country, even in the West, you know, the supposed democratic West, they have red lines uh, that they draw in regards to what is and isn't free speech. So let me just give you a few examples. This is from France. Francis Alain Soral gets jail sentence for Holocaust denial. So for denying the Holocaust, he goes to jail for a year. Here is David Irving jailed for Holocaust denial. He could have gotten 10 years under Austria's laws for this, but he ended up uh, in prison for three years. And here's one in Germany, Nazi grandma loses appeal case, sentenced to 14 months in prison for Holocaust denial. This was in 2017. So uh, this woman who I, I believe is, she's 89, she's, she's on her way to jail. And so there are red lines in Europe. And you could say, Brian, how do you compare the Holocaust to defaming the king of Thailand? How are they the same? Well, first of all, don't people have the right to, def to, f to define their own red lines themselves? Who are people in the West to determine that for Thailand? Number two, think about it this way. Uh, for Westerners, monarchy is not a very appealing idea. Western monarchies 
presided over empire and they ruled over other people. They subjugated them, they humiliated them, they brutalized them, they exploited them, they stole their resources out from under them. And they did this for generations. Uh, Thailand's mar monarchy did not do that. Thailand's monarchy defended Thailand against Western imperialism, against the Western monarchies and their empires. And Thailand's uh, monarchy did that for generations. And so it's a very sensitive issue here in Thailand because Thai people understand what the consequences would have been if they were subjected to Western imperialism. And uh, I want to show people uh, an article here. This is what happens if your country falls to imperialism. Uh, this is an article from The Independent, from the UK. Five of the worst atrocities carried out by the British Empire. Uh, there's, they're saying 43% of Brits thought the British Empire was a good thing, while 44% were proud of Britain's history of colonialism. And then they just talk about concentration camps, uh, massacres, uh, partitioning of India, suppressing uprisings and famines in India where uh, 12 to 29 million Indians died because the British Empire was shipping grain to Europe uh, out from under the starving Indians. So uh, that's actually on a scale much larger than the Holocaust. So people understand, people who were subjected to Western imperialism understand the bullet they dodged if they managed to dodge it. And if they didn't manage to dodge it, they understand why uh, fighting against this is important and why drawing red lines regarding free speech to protect against Western imperialism is so important. And so how dare the West, their media, their fake human rights organizations uh, judge Thailand and tell Thailand where they can and cannot draw their red lines. This is not about free speech. This is about defending the country against imperialism. And I just showed you that the Thai opposition is backed by the US because today, now, in the 21st century, the U.S. is a modern-day empire. Their military is literally in other people's countries, killing people in their own country to impose their agenda on the people in their own country. Uh, Thailand is not in the clear yet. They are still at risk of being a victim of modern-day imperialism. Uh, China is facing off with the U.S. because the U.S. refuses to let Asia go. The US isn't even located in Asia, and yet it demands primacy over Asia. So this is still a problem ongoing. Thai people have the right to defend themselves against it. And if it means drawing red lines to protect their monarchy, which unite the Thai people and help serve as a form of protection against imperialism past and present, then that's their right to do it. And uh, I'm tired of hearing people claim that this is a free speech issue. It is not. If you thought this video was useful, please like and share it. Think about subscribing. It's free to do and it helps the channel grow. Check the video description for all of the links that I referenced in the video, as well as for ways you can help support my work. To everyone who has been helping, whether it's through Patreon month to month or one-time donations, or even if you're just helping share my work, I literally couldn't do this work without your support. Uh, so thank you so much for that. And as always, thank you for watching.